Hi, good morning, and welcome back to another edition of Discover History here at the Keys History and Discovery Center. I'm curator Brad Bertelli, and today we're going to talk a little bit about one of the lesser known uh, inhabitants or uh, residents of Indian Key, a man named James Egan, who plays a much larger role in the history of the island than one might think automatically, because um, and we'll get back and we'll get to him shortly, or get to uh, his Indian key portion of the uh, of the story shortly. Now, James Egan and his family from the Bahamas, as most of most of the or so many of the Florida Key stories begin in the Bahamas. Um, the, his father uh, received a Spanish land grant in the early 1800s, and they were given. Uh, hundreds of acres of property in South Florida along uh, the, uh, in, in the area of the Miami River. And um, <clears throat> when he was, he had several brothers. Uh, they were uh, very, familiar, very familiar with the water, with fishing, with diving. And he would actually end up um, putting his property on for the, uh, his property, uh, 640 acres along the Miami River up for sale in 1829. And what's really interesting about the advertisement that is, that is shown in a Key West newspaper is that it talks about all of the plants and trees that are growing on this, on this, on, on this section of, of, of land by the Miami River. And it's talking about if you're looking for a plantation, this, this is a great place. But what's really interesting about the advertisement is it talks about uh, uh, groves of, of lime trees that rival those that are growing on the Isle of Cuba, which, and this is 1829, which predates anything that, I know Henry Prine is often attributed with the, uh, with inter introducing the key lime to South Florida and the Florida Keys, but this is a prime example or a prime document that shows that the key lime was already established in South Florida long before Henry Prine began to, to ship, uh, to ship uh, plants from uh, the Yucatan Peninsula around Campeche in the early, 18th, early 1830s. Now, after selling the property on Indian, on, on a, uh, a, a, at the Miami River, Egan would move to Indian Key, and he built a small house at first, and then he went to Jacob Hausman, who by this point had purchased um, much of the island, um, m m many of the buildings. He never purchased the island. They were all squatters on the island. But um, Egan did borrow, uh, borrow, uh, uh, or borrow uh, money um, to, or credit for shingles and lumber to build a large two and a half story building that became probably the most famous structure on Indian Key. Now, this, in 1832, this building, this two and a half story, uh, story structure is, uh, is completed. It's being advertised in Key West as a boarding house. So by 1832, there are actually two hotels or two, uh, two um, uh, a boarding house and a hotel operating on Indian Key. The first, the tropical, what became known as the tropical, tropical Hotel had been built by the island's first resident, uh, Silas Fletcher, about 18, who arrived in 1824. And when he came in 1824, built a large two-story structure for his wife and children. And Fletcher would operate and build uh, the first, uh, the general store. Actually, the first general store, because there were two eventually. Um, but this was, became the second two-story house or two-story structure built on the island. Uh, James, e James Egan's boarding house. Now, when James Audubon arrived, traveling from, from Charleston and, uh, and, and coming down to Key West, where he would stay for quite a while, um, Audubon would hire Egan as a local guide, because Egan was very, very familiar with, with the area with the water, and, and Audubon was looking for birds, and uh, Audubon was amazed by not just, the, not just the variety, but the number of birds. Pelicans and 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 uh, and, and uh, cormorants and herons and ibis and all you know and herons, um, all, all of the uh, all, all the really amazing birds. He wanted to find a flamingo. Didn't didn't see a flamingo. I think at that point maybe he did. I'm not positive, but he he would find his find his flamingos eventually. Actually, you would see them in the salt ponds at, at, in Key West uh, later on. Um, but so Audubon hires hires uh, Egan to be his to be his, uh, his, his guide around the area looking for, 
looking for birds. And when Audubon would look for birds, uh, he wanted to paint them and capture them. But in order to do so, he had to shoot them and kill them and then take them back. Uh, he would skin them and then pose them and then sketch them from that area, from, from that point on. And if you look at Audubon's sketches, they don't look supernatural. They're kind of... Uh, they're, they're kind of stilted a little bit, and that's because you know that they're being posed and not like when you photograph one today. You know, you find that that really natural natural positioning, and in, in Audubon's paintings, sometimes uh, the flamingo is one uh, example of that, where the birds don't look they, they look kind of stilted and kind of weird. Uh, but anyways, uh, so Egan, um, so uh, uh, Audubon stays at, at Egan's boarding house, and when Audubon is. Um, is staying that night. There is <clears throat> he is sketching the birds in, 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 in one area of the house, and there's a big kind of uh, not a big, but there's dancing and and kind of a party going on in, in the main part of the house. And Audubon writes in, in one of his letters talking about the cat gut screeching from the violin, and there's you know people falling and and, and, and glorious laughter. And what was really interesting about one of his letters is that he talks about how. Um, at one point, everyone stops, and the men are given, you know, grog, and the women are giving a, a much, you know, diluted claret, which is kind of a, a kind of wine, not really, a, not really fair for everybody, but that, that's how it was in those days. Now, Egan's boarding house would not be successful, and he would end up selling his boarding house to Jacob Hausman. I believe Hausman bought it for five hundred five hundred eighty dollars, somewhere around there. And then Hausman would turn around and sell this house to, uh, to Charles Howe, who, would be, who was a partner of, of Henry Prine and the Tropical Plant Company. Howe already had a house on the island. He was also the postmaster uh, for, the, for the island and operated the post office out of his house. But, um, but Hausman, being kind of the, the, the schemy guy that he is, sold Howe the house for $580 but he also sold the property on which the house was sitting for an additional $580. Land, by the way, which, which Hausman never owned in the first place. Um, so anyways, Howe is, owns this, this second house now, and when Henry Perrine arrives on Christmas Day, 1838, it is the James Egan boarding house that Perrine actually, and his family actually move into. And we're gonna walk over to the, uh, our really cool Indian key model here for a minute. Aaron's not going to trip on the cord. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and this is, um, again, my favorite exhibit in, in the museum because it's my favorite island in the Florida Keys. But one, uh, and, there are, and, and the state has done a really good job of putting historical markers and interpretive, interpretive panels or interpretive markers on the island. But the one mistake they do have is that the light is there. That is the representation of the tropical hotel. And on the, on the historical marker there, it is here where it states that Audubon stayed. When in actuality, let's go to the left a little bit. This structure over here is the house that Egan built in 1832 and the house that that would sell to Charles Howe and his, and his house uh, house that's sitting that one story large one story house right behind it that, that also operated as the post office on Indian Key from about 1832 to 1840 1833 to 1840 um, and this house is where Perrine ends, ends up ends up living. And we know that on August 7th, 1840, while uh, that's, that is when the attack at Indian Key during the second escalation of the Seminole War occurs, and that is the house in which uh, Henry Prine is, is staying. It's where his family is hiding underneath the wharf um, in, in the turtle crawl uh, underneath the house and where Henry Perrine um, is in the third, in the, on, the, on the third story, kind of two and a half story, there's a cupola upstairs. And um, that, this is where Henry Perrine is hiding during the attack on the island. And eventually the Indians bust through the uh, heavy wooden trap door up into the cupola. And that is where they shoot and kill Henry Perrine. They set the house on fire. And that is, um, so Henry, that is the end of Henry Perrine. Um, after, after the fact, the, all the family, all, all the children, his wife Anne and his three children, uh, Sarah, uh, Hester, 
and, and Henry Jr. all survived the incident at Indian Key. And they would bury uh, Henry Perrine at near his, uh, one of his um, experimental nurseries for, for the Tropical Plant Company on Lower Matacumbi next to, uh, next to a, 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 some sisal agave at the Tropical Plant Company uh, on Lower Matacumbi Key. Now years later, Henry Perrine Jr. would come back to Indian Key about 1876 and look for his father's grave on Lower Matacumbi. He could not find it, but his grave site was moved, metaphorically at least, to Palmyra, New York, where a marker stands to this day. Yes? We have a question. Can we dock at the island without a guided tour? You, the dock at Indian Key was destroyed in Hurricane Irma in 2017. It has still not been, uh, not been uh, um, re repaired. Uh, according, to, I've talked to the uh, to the uh, the park rangers out there, and they hope to have it um, to ha have it fixed sometime this year, maybe early next year. But currently, you cannot dock at the island. You, if you have a smaller boat, a skiff or, or whatever, you can anchor nearby and then kind of wade into the island. Uh, it is open you know, from uh, 8 a.m. to dusk, basically. It's $2.50 per person to enter the island. It is a state park. Uh, it's, on, it's an honor, area, honor system to, to visit the island. Um, but you can take a, a, a self-guided tour. I'm gonna walk behind real quick. One second. And when you get to the island, you will see a, uh, they, they have one of, uh, a marker for our really great uh, walking tour we did with the Florida Humanities Council. And there are over 30 different tours from around Florida. We've been fortunate enough to uh, help produce two of these tours. Um, and you can scan the, 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 uh, the code at the island with your phone and download the app. Um, to take a, a guided tour of the island, but just walking around and looking at the interpretive panels is kind of like stepping back in time. It's really a great trip no matter what. So uh, kayak is preferred, easier to get to Indian Key via kayak. You can take a small boat, um, but larger boats are still not, you still can't dock at the island. Uh, hopefully that will be rectified within the next, I don't know, 10 years, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, so that's um, that's our. What, as for James Egan, he kind of disappears from the scene after after the 18th after the 1832 event. After he, uh, he after he um, uh, sells his property to Hausman and he leaves Indian Key. And to tell you the truth, I don't know what happens to him after that. But it's really a cool story when you talk about uh, the history of the Key Lime and the history of, of, of Henry Perrine, how one of the primary documents that kind of proved that the, that the Key Lime was already on in South Florida prior to um, Perrine actually going to, uh, to the Yucatan Peninsula on Campeche, that this for sale sign, that, that, or this, this for sale advertisement that Egan puts in the newspaper um, ends up being one of the, the, the prime documents that you know, proved that the line was already there. And, and then he comes to the island and builds this two and a half story house that becomes probably the most famous structure on Indian Key. Uh, and, and, and unfortunately, the, where uh, Henry Perrine uh, meets his demise on August 7th, 1840. So in the meantime, we don't have any presentations this week. Um, next week, we have a great, uh, a great presentation coming up, which we'll talk about uh, later in the, uh, on next week's uh, edition of Discover History. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed our little chat, and we will see you next Tuesday at 10 o'clock to talk more history. And is that, is that a question coming up? And uh, so guys, have a great week. Thanks so much.